My name is uh, Pete Kayser. I've been a resident of Nantucket for 44 years and on the water for 40 of those. Fishing up and down the coast, diving and salvage work. Recently, a variety of islanders have asked me to give an explanation about what the public hearing on Wednesday, March 22nd, at 11 o'clock at the police station was going to be about. So, <clears throat> here we go. This past summer, 2016, Nantucket became aware of the fact that 90% of the coastal communities of Massachusetts have in the past and at present been granted time and area closures for up to six months, if not more, and even some year-round protection for the marine ecosystems, extending out to three miles, which are state waters. In recent years, after witnessing the steady increase of bottom fishing draggers around the near coastal waters in Nantucket and the steady decline of forage fish and predator fish, we asked the state why we did not have similar protection and the answer was, is that we never requested it. So, that being said, we gathered a wealth of local knowledge, proceeded to gather info and maps that displayed multiple spawning fish areas and essential fish habitats and other pertinent reasons why our local marine fisheries and ecosystem are in such need of this protection. The Division of Marine Fisheries denied our request, stating, when I say we, it's the town of Nantucket, denied the request, stating that we did not have enough scientific data, and after reviewing the letter, that they replied, it appears that our request was denied based on financial principles, not biological, and they were trying to help both out-of-state and in-state small draggers to continue to fish the near coastal waters of Nantucket at a point in time when the fisheries and ecosystems around Nantucket have been deteriorating. The state is hoping <clears throat> that the federal government is going to pass some regulations this year that will help our deteriorating situation. Even if the federal regulations are passed, the vast majority of Nantucketers feel that at this point in time, with the increasing fishing pressure, that the Nantucket marine ecosystems deserve some protection equal to the other 90% of the coastal communities. Again, we believe that if the three mile state water protection was granted, there would once again be spawning squid on the north shore of Nantucket, and before long, due to a phenomena called site fidelity, where creatures return to where they were born, there would be enough biomass flowing in and out of the sound that the small draggers could make a living. The squid mops would hatch, and there would be much less near coastal discards, and the ecosystems could once again flourish. As in the marine ecosystems, futuristically, we all have to coexist. And that being said, we look forward to working with the Department of Marine Fisheries to solidify some solutions that work for the commercial and recreational participants, and most importantly, for the marine ecosystems. At this point in time, I'm going to put up a few slides to give you a visual about these protected areas and some of the designations and some of the gear types that have been used. Okay, here we go. <coughs> this is the map that came back as a reply from the state. And it's color-coded with a lot of hash marks. And what we found out was that from New Hampshire all the way down around Gloucester, Salem, Boston, all the way down through Cape Cod Bay up to Provincetown. And then if you skip this little area, come over to East Ham, down around Monomoy Island to Chatham, Harwich, Hyannis, all the way over to Mashpee, that whole area has this six months protection, if not longer. And then you look over here at Buzzards Bay, that's completely closed year-round. So, that being said, that amounts to 90% of the coastal communities. Nantucket, 
Over here you see a few hash marks. The bulk of them are from April 1st to April 31st. At that point in time, there are basically no fish around for anybody to catch anyway. At this point in time, we do have a small area from Great Point to the East Jetty. That area is closed from June 1st to September 15th for draggers. And when I say they have these protected areas, that's against mobile gear. Most of the mobile gear in this area are either bottom trawlers or hydraulic sea clamors. Okay, next slide. <coughs> when we talked about some of these designations, as you can see, Nantucket, right down here, surrounded by the green and the hash marks. This is all considered to be a habitat of particular concern for Nantucket Shoals and Great South Channel codfish. Basically, it's a breeding ground, a spawning area where the small, they, that's where they live, and that's where they grow up. In fact, back in the 70s when I first got here, this is the area that we used to codfish for when I was fishing with Spank at times, Spanky. We'd catch codfish all through here. Next one. As you can see here, it's a little blurry, but there's the tip of the cape. Nantucket is in the center of this right there, the black spot. This whole area is considered to be essential fish habitat for squid mops. Now when we say squid mops, when a squid spawns, they all aggregate, they get together. They have the spawning event. The females will go right to the bottom. They'll secrete a substance in the bottom on habitat if it's there, if not on gravel and sand. The rest of them start coming down and before you know it, they plug out these tubes, which are full of eggs, and it's called a squid mop. Again, this whole area is basically a breeding area, and when they finish breeding, they put them on the bottom. What we found out recently in September down in Rhode Island, the state, the, actually the scientists for the Mid-Atlantic Council squid fishery stated, and we were all taken by surprise, that once those squid mops are attached to the bottom, they need to be attached for 17 to 30 days in order to successfully hatch. There lies some of the issue. In most parts of the world, when they catch squid, they fish them under lights at night and they purse them, where the gear goes down so far, goes under the squid, they suck them out. They do that so that they don't interfere with the squid mops on the bottom. The bottom draggers, when they're using that methodology, when they scoop them up and dislodge them from the bottom, and they bring them up, then they shovel them back over. According to most all the scientists we talked to, that it's pretty much a devastating amount of mortality, if not 100%. That's where this whole part of this issue lies. So anyway, that's what this whole area is designed as a spawning area for squid. Next. This map is a map that shows a spawning sea heron. Again, the reason why we're alarmed about what's going on, is back in the 70s and 80s, you can see this whole, the different dark areas are spawning sea heron areas. In the fall, the squid, or not the squid, the heron, used to aggregate on the backside of the cape, coming down through this area. They would start spawning here, work their way down, way down, come on the back side of the Cape, come down to Nantucket. And it was awesome. You can't believe the amount of fish, heron, birds, whales, mammals. We thought it could never end. In the early to mid 2000, they approved this herring fishery, which were big boats. 
those boats, some of them in pair trawlers, which would be 150 feet in length each, tow a net between them the size of a football field. They intercepted this biomass of herring coming down through, which historically anybody always remembers, this big flow of herring coming down right into this spawning area. Anyway, after repeated pressure from the big boats, they cut it right off. We thought it could never happen, but because of, the, again, the gear type, the small mesh nets, they were able to shut that right off in disbelief to us. At this point in time, we're now witnessing all of these boats coming between the vineyard and Nantucket that, in the last five years, six years, been an unprecedented amount of pressure, fishing pressure, with bottom trawlers that have shown up before June 9th, 100 is up to 140 that are allowed to fish inside and right up to the beach with, again, this very small mesh, which basically nothing gets out of there. It doesn't matter if it's a sculpin, a sea robin, a skate, a dogfish, a striper, but nothing's getting out of the net, unfortunately. So that's what this map's about. The designation is for spawning heron. Next. <coughs> this map, you have spawning sea heron, and then you have what we used to get in the ditches and Matiket and some of the ponds when they open it, were called river herring or alewives. As you can see the purple area surrounding Nantucket and the vineyard, this whole area, again, that is designated as a river herring monitoring and avoidance area. Most other areas have catch caps, like this area up here. They have a limited amount of river herring they're allowed to catch. After that happens, they have to leave the area, no more fishing in there. So anyway, this is just another designation that this area has right here. Next. Another, we're trying to just prove the point that this is an environmentally rich, rich area. As you can see right here, this right around Nantucket, Cape Cod, this is the backside of the Cape of Nantucket, right along here. And right here it says, Cave and Islands Ocean Sanctuary. And a sanctuary is usually a place where they try to preserve the bottom, protect spawning classes of fish. But anyway, this is just another designation that this whole area that we're talking about has. Next. Could you go to the next one after this? <coughs> Hopefully you can see this. But you'll see the heavy green meshes, these diamonds. That's about a six and a half inch mesh, could be five. Then the smaller mesh in between is an inch and seven eighths. It's a very small mesh. In New England, this configuration is basically illegal because it would be fishing a liner, the liner being the small net, inside of the larger mesh. For ground fish, and most other fluke and everything else, it's six and a half inches. So what they've done, they take the six and a half inch net, they put the small mesh inside of it. Now that's the size of the gear that they're towing the inshore waters with. And barely, basically nothing really escapes that small of a configuration. All right, go back. This little blurb talks about what's called the strengthener. Now, as I just showed you on that other chart, that the large mesh with the small mesh, that's basically called a liner inside of a cod end. It's been illegal in New England waters forever, since the Magnuson Act started back in 77, 1977. The strengthener is something that came about 
back in 2000 or 1999, and it was proposed to the Mid-Atlantic Council. They're the ones that control the squid fishery. And the guy said, look, we're using such a small mesh that we'd like to put a heavier mesh on the very bottom of the net so it doesn't, ru doesn't wear through and they don't lose all their fish. So the Mid-Atlantic Council approved it to be on the bottom half of the cod end, which is the back of the net where all the fish are. That was approved. What happened was back going forward in 2008, the industry went back and proposed running the small, the other strengthener all the way around the net. And they said that was because they get hung up now and then. And that would prevent them, if they got hung up, from losing all the fish. But now you have the scenario that's been illegal in New England forever, but now you have a large mesh with a small mesh inside of it fishing in these areas that have the designation of uh, essential fish habitat for codfish, for river herring, for sea herring, for squid mops. That is part of the issue. Prior to this strengthener, where they said if it ruptures, the net ruptures, and they'll lose all their fish, they used to use what was called a splitting strap. Instead of trying to haul the whole net up at one time, continue forward. <coughs> one one more. That one, yep. So instead of hauling the whole net up at one time, what they would do, this is the very, this is the back of the boat. They're hauling the net up. Here's the very bottom of the net. Now, this up here is called a splitting strap. If there's too much weight in the bottom of a net and all the way through, what they would do is say, they take this line, they pull the net up. Right now, this is only partly filled, but they could lower that down if they wanted to. Anyway, if this was all solid fish and they tried to lift it, it may blow out. So they use a splitting strap, which picks up just the back end of the net. The rest of the fish in the net, the net would be in the water. They would haul up that splitting strap, dump the end of the net, put it back together, put it over. Now this net that's in the water, they'd put it in forward. The fish would get into the back of the net. They would haul it up again. Anyway, that was the historical way of hauling in net. But, again, from 1999 to 2008, when 2008, they approved this strengthener around a small mesh. It catches everything. Next. <coughs> so this is a federal document that shows what the bycatch. This is a National Marine Fisheries Observer Program from 2007 to 2015. And it lists all the different species that traditionally come up when they're towing in these areas. It's over, this goes, that whole span for all the trimesters, one, this actually, this is for trimester two, which is what takes part on the inshore waters around the Cape and the Islands in the summer. What this says is that pounds, it says that for every 100 pounds of squid that are retained, 57 pounds of various other species are discarded dead. And that's a list of over 50 different species. At this point in time, you know, nobody wants to be fishing like this. The guys are trying to modify the gear so they don't have as much bycatch. But that is the facts. And so when people are saying that, you know, it seems like the ecosystem around Nantucket is being depleted, being depleted, again, when you have 100 pounds to keep and you throw 57 pounds out, it's not a sustainable fishery. And that's part of the issue that we're trying to bring into the light. Next. <clears throat> a 
Unfortunately, when you have that smaller mesh and nothing gets out, this is what you see a lot of times when they haul back. And that's where you get that 57 pounds of discard. I mean, there are a bunch of squid in here, but again, they all coexist. Sometimes there'll be a clean haul of squid. But again, as the observer data shows that for every 100 pounds retained, 57 pounds are discarded dead of over 50 different species. Is that the end? So, that being said, let's have a few other little notes. Okay. So again, <clears throat> when it comes down to the squid mops were highly controversial. People said, well, we don't think they harm them when, you know, they've been doing it forever, towing these things up. But again, repeated testimony from the scientists say that the squid mops, they have to be attached to the bottom for 17 to 30 days. If not, and they're mechanically disturbed, the mortality rate is up right up there toward 100%. Uh, the excessive bycatch, that's something that everybody has noticed. A lot of the beach fishermen, tackle shops, small boat fisheries around Nantucket, when you keep taking that amount of bycatch out and it goes back dead, it's a direct relationship of what's going on. And again, Nantucket, we're all pro-commercial fishing. I mean, I fish forever up and down this coast. And many other guys have done it, and women. But at this point in time, witnessing what's going on, everybody's complaining about the you know, lack of forage food, the lack of predators. So that's why we found out about this. We went to the state. We thought it was going to be a pretty easy deal. But again, the small, there are a little fleet of small boats around here. Pud Dunham is one that has a small dragger. He's the only one out of Nantucket that has a dragger now, a small one. Bill Blount has the other one. That's more of an offshore fish, fishing boat. But there's a handful of other guys. And we approached the state to see if with a small dragger they don't do as much damage with the small nets and to see if they could get an exemption of some sort. But the state said they could not do it that any boats, a state boat is a boat that is under 72 feet in length. Now these guys are like 38 feet, 40 feet, Pud's is a 43 foot boat. And we feel that they should have some right to fish in there. But the state said it's all or nothing. So at this point in time, I actually sit on the advisory panel for the Mid-Atlantic Council for the Squid Mackerel Butterfish Fishery. And so, how they work it in these meetings, the large council meetings, they start off with an advisory panel meeting where people get together, they talk about the issues, and then they make a list of alternatives, pro and con. They meet again, they hash it out, they do some you know, information, some fact finding. They'll come back, and they'll come down to about four or five different situations that they're gonna vote on. So right now, we're asking for three miles. Again, that is in its entirety. What we feel like we're gonna do is go to the state and say, let's see what we can do, see what, who can live with what compromises. And that's where we're at this point in time. So we're feeling that if we can establish a line somewhere, again, great point to the East Jetty is already a closed area. If we could extend that line possibly to Muskegon, instead of going down there, go straight across, that would allow fish to come through between Mattaquet and Tuckanuck. It would allow some squid to get in between Tuckanuck and Muskegon. And if they got in, they would spawn the squid mops uninterrupted after 17 to 30 days would hatch. And again, it comes back to site fidelity, which is when fish come back to where they were born. After a year or two, we feel that it would be like the old days. There are a lot of fish in there. The small draggers could fish again. Right now, if you go to the end of the jetty, 
you're about a mile off the beach. So what the added, you know, at the added amount is right now is just a two mile swath. So anyway, we're going back to the state. It will be discussed on Wednesday about the different alternatives that could happen and the reasonings why. So I guess that's about it. And if you have any questions, you can call me uh, personally and I'll answer and do the best I can. But at the end of the day, again, we're just looking to get something that is sustainable, both the fisheries and the marine ecosystem, not only for us, mostly for the future generations and the young people.